The offerings of burnt and blistered dishes in restaurants is growing, and the cooking trend is catching on with home cooks as well. Cooking shows, blogs, magazines all show ways of artfully burning food, while kitchenware companies are offering new tools like small blowtorches. Here with the story is WSJ's Cecily Rowetter. Cecily, great to see you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. So first off, small blowtorches, are these even safe to have in the kitchen? If you think about it, they really have been around for decades. I think we all have that image in our head of a white-hatted chef lovingly burning, caramelizing a creme brulee. What's new about it is that people now use these to blacken other things like vegetables. For instance, if you look on the Wilmington Sonoma website, you will see um, a little kitchen blowtorch, but it is shown sort of blackening the skin of ripe tomatoes, of wow. fresh tomatoes. Move over creme brulee. So, so tell us, Cecily, what is behind the rise of burnt? Why does this appeal to people right now? It's really interesting. People nowadays crave authenticity, real food. And to them, a food that has small imperfections, small flaws like a, a black spot or a seared edge just seems more real and homemade and authentic than something that's flawless and processed to perfection. If you think about it, um, perhaps a few years ago, if you got a pizza with a charred bubbly crust, you might have sent it back. But now that's almost a sign that you see, oh, it's probably fresh out of the oven, handmade. And it, the whole thing ties into another trend, which is the popularity of peasant food, of the food that's cooked in street markets. And if you think about it, those um, kinds of trends always happen in cultures that cook over open fire. So there was a lot of burning on street markets and, and in the fields of South America where people are grilling meats and vegetables. So it sort of all ties in together, and the buzzword that keeps coming up is realness, authenticity. Well, these pictures sure look good to me with a little bit of burnt edges. I'm all for it. So this trend, though, is even showing up in cocktails. How do you char a cocktail exactly? You don't char the whole thing, but bitters, of course, and charred foods, by definition, are a little bit more bitter, are a perfect way to offset, say, mm. a syrup that's too sweet that's in a cocktail. So what people do is they will use a syrupy cocktail or a cocktail with a mixer, and then they will put smoked salt or smoked ice, or they will put a charred fruit peel. One of the coolest products that I thought I've come across um, while doing this research was a charred grapefruit peel cocktail mixer. That actually so sounds delicious. very intriguing to me. I would definitely Got try it. that. <laughs> but I have to say, what about concerns over food safety? I thought that burnt food was considered carcinogenic. That's an excellent question. I think most of us here grew up firmly believing that burnt toast was a surefire way to get cancer. But it really turns out um, it depends on how much of it you eat and what it is you're charring or you're grilling. Vegetables, for instance, are largely considered safe because they don't have the components in them that could turn into these potentially cancer-causing substances. If you charbroil meat very darkly or uh, darkly brown your potatoes, that po causes a little danger, not too much. So just don't eat it every day is what the experts are saying, not that you would. So everything in moderation is wonderful and vegetables are perfectly safe. Well, that's very reassuring to hear that about vegetables. Now, I'm sure that singeing properly when cooking takes some skill. What tips did you pick up in your reporting on how we can give it a try? I did pick up a number. The most important thing is the pot. Do not use a cheap pot. You have to use a heavy um, sort of skillet, cast iron skillet. The um, best the best chefs who do this actually use a South American sort of flat top grill called a plancha, which I've learned. But there are a number of other tips as well if you don't want to invest in that. Um, when you cut your vegetables, make sure there's a lot of surface that can get browned. Don't chop them too finely. Um, also, don't move stuff around in the pan all the time to prevent burning. You actually want that little bit of burning so you get that charred look. And above all, um, the chefs say, pay attention, use your senses. With your eyes, see, is it getting too black? Probably not good. With, you, uh, with your nose, is it getting too burnt and you smell, you can smell it. So the most important thing, I guess, is 
pay attention so you don't uh, really actually burn to the, the food to the extent that it's not edible. So uh, that it really has that lovely charring. So when you see it, you want to keep to brown and stop short of black. You don't want it to get in, veer into black right. territory. Dark walnut brown is good, but you'll know when you've ruined it. That sounds great. It's so interesting to hear you talk about the, the, the plancha. Now I know why there are so many dishes in Latin food that say a la plancha at the end. Ah, <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cecily, for that. It all sounds delicious. <laughs> I know, I'm hungry. <laughs> yes, me too, you too.